Alright, so glycolysis is a very important topic. Like I said, it is a primary process for ADP production and is exclusively important in RBCs where it is the only uh, process for ADP production as well as in anaerobic conditions. Alright, so first of all, let's come to glucose transport. Uh, glucose is transported, okay, so here what I've made it is a lipid bilet, this is a cell membrane which has glute proteins. This is, this is a protein embedded which is um, specialized for the transport of glucose passively, not requiring energy from the plasma into the intracellular fluid inside the cell. So this is a glute protein and we have actually 14 types of glute, protein, glute proteins and glucose, glute stands for glucose transporter. So those 14, amongst those 14 types, four are, uh, are, are the most important. The GLUT1 protein is present in your uh, blood and blood-brain barrier. <coughs> the GLUT2 uh, is present in your kidneys, your liver and your pancreatic beta cells. GLUT3 uh, are present in your neurons. GLUT4 is present in your myocytes and the adipocytes. Alright, so uh, once the glucose enters, now here I'm going to talk about something uh, which is, you know, very practical so you can better understand. <clears throat> Assume that we're starting a business here. Once you start a start a business, you intend to invest some money, you have to invest some money, right? So you get a surplus amount back, you get a profit, right? The same applies here. You given some energy to get more energy back, surplus, profit, right? So what happens is that we're going to, um, once the glucose is inside, we phosphorylate it with the energy uh, with ADP, which is an energy currency. It, it contains energy in its bonds. And what we've done is that we've removed one phosphate from the ATP, converted it to ADP, adenosine diphosphate. This is adenosine triphosphate, and that phosphate go went to glucose to form glucose six phosphate. Right now. Once that is done, we don't want a high energy molecule to just leave the cell back just as it came. You know, glucose just came. We don't want glucose 6 phosphate to go out because we've invested the energy. And for that to happen, luckily, we don't have a transporter to carry this glucose 6 phosphate back outside, this, uh, outside of the cell. And this is what essentially happens. I mean, if you have business partners, um, they would ask you to sign a contract with you, a deal in which you invest a certain amount of money that you cannot withdraw. Uh, the same happens. So once it's converted to glucose 6-phosphate and that is uh, via the enzyme hexokinase. Okay, so here I'm going to talk about enzymes. Um, there are some basic names of enzymes which have, uh, you know, w w once you see their, those names you can you know, tell what their function is and then they have sub their, the name of the substrate with them so you can better understand what the reaction is going to be catalyzed. So once we have this kinase, if we have kinase as, uh, as the end for the enzyme name, uh, that essentially means that we're adding a phosphate bond. Kinase, remember it from kinetic energy, in which, you know, we have movement. So once you provide something with kinetic energy, it is going to have energy, right? And phosphate gives energy. So hexokinase. Uh, this, this hexo is for, you know, hexosis. It's, it, it, it tells us about the substrate. But kinase generally means we're adding a phosphate. Uh, the opposite of kinase is a phosphatase, which removes a phosphate, right? Similarly, we have dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenases, they remove the hydrogen from the substrate, and they, they uh, transfer that hydrogen to an electron carrier, for example, an NAD positive, to form NADH, or any other uh, electron carrier, right? Then we have isomerase and mutase. Okay, so lots of people they confuse isomerase with mutase. A uh, simple trick to remember that is that uh, isomerases enzymes, I mean, glucose and fructose, they are isomers, right? Uh, glucose is an aldose sugar, fructose is a ketose sugar. Uh, we need to interconvert them. When we want to interconvert them, uh, we want an enzyme that isomerizes, uh, isomerizes them. Uh, to the other isomer, so hence isomerase. Then, for example, in DNA, we have, you know, if we have a mutation in our DNA, what happens is that uh, a certain, um, you know, uh, fragment of the DNA is maybe substituted by another one. And, you know, so the other uh, one takes its place. 
Similarly, uh, what, so what happens is that, for example, if we're converting 1,3 BPG, it's just an example, don't you know, get over it. 1,3 BPG to 2,3 BPG, we're just uh, changing the position of the phosphate group, which uh, means that we're mutating it, so the enzyme mutates. Isomerase mutates, mut mut that's the difference, alright? Okay, so once we have glucose 6-phosphate made, by using ATP, we, we, with the expenditure of ATP and using hexokinase, we can convert glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, which now has a higher energy value. This glucose 6-phosphate is then going to be converted to fructose 6-phosphate by the enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase, alright? Phosphoglucose isomerase. Now this fructose 6, uh, 6 phosphate is again phosphorylated using ATP. We had our first uh, phosphate group on the 6th carbon, right? Glucose 6 phosphate. We're adding another phosphate group from ATP to the first carbon. We had, we had already one, uh, we had one already on the 6th carbon. Now we're adding one on the first carbon to form fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. Bis means 2, bisphosphate. With the enzyme PFK1 or phosphofructokinase 1. This enzyme, phosphofructokinase 1, is the most important enzyme of glycolysis. And hexokinase is the first, the PFK1 is the second, and this uh, pyruvate kinase is the third most. Uh, th these are actually the, uh, the essential or the rate limiting steps or determinants of your glycolysis, right? So, PFK1 uh, is actually, uh, there are certain factors that inhibit the, the activity of PFK1 and there are certain factors that stimulate its, its activity. Among the inhibitors are an excess of ATP in your cells, right? If you're, if you're already having a lot of ATP, we don't need to produce more, right? We need to conserve our glucose, right? So, this is what happens that it inhibits PFK1 and being the, a key enzyme in glycolysis, glycolysis doesn't occur. Similarly, we have high levels of AMP, which is adenosine monophosphate. It is, um, you know, it is the least uh, energetic amongst the uh, um, adenosine phosphate molecules. We have ATP, a high energy molecule, ADP, an intermediate uh, energy molecule, and then AMP, uh, a low energy molecule. So, uh, if AMP concentration is high, this phosphofructokinase 1 will be stimulated. Alright. Phosphofructokinase 1. Now we made fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, which is a 6 carbon compound. Remember, remember this, alright? Now we're converting that 6 carbon compound from fructose 1,6 bisphosphate to 2, 3 carbon compounds, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now this, uh, the enzyme required here is aldolase. Aldolase is the enzyme required here. Now, this DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and by the way, I'm sorry I didn't have space to write it. Uh, this is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, remember that? This, is, this itself is not important in glycolysis. This is just a uh, derivative of uh, fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, which was just formed. It is later on going to be converted back to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to be uh, then later on used in glycolysis. This is the sequence. So DHAP is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Triose because it's a 3 carbon compound, phosphate isomerase. Isomerase, right? Uh, once it's converted, this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is then converted to 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate or 1,3 BPG for short. Now, here uh, the enzyme, which is very important as I mentioned earlier, uh, is the glucose 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenases remove hydrogen from the substrate, right? And they transfer it to an electron carrier, the electron carrier in this case being NAD positive, which is converted to NADH, excuse me, NADH. Uh, so glucose 3 phosphate dehydrogenase converts NAD positive to NADH, and this uh, later on will uh, be, uh, you know, of value to us in consequent steps of ADP production and oxidative phosphorylation, where this NADH is going to provide. Um, electrons for the electron transport chain. We'll later on discover that. Now this 1,3 BPG that's made, uh, okay, this, is, this uh, compound is important because 
uh, it is converted to uh, 2 3 BPG in red blood cells. Not all of it, some of it is converted to 2 3 BPG, the other takes part in the rest of the steps of the preceding steps of the gly of glycolysis. 2 3 BPG, why is it important? If you know basics about hemoglobin association curve, hemoglobin association curve, uh, according to that theory, uh, if there is an excess of 2,3 dpg, it sh shifts the curve to the right, which means that uh, the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen decreases, and so the oxygen supply to cells throughout the body increases. So it's important in unloading the oxygen, right, where it is needed. So two, th some of the 1,3 dpg in RBC is converted to 2,3 dpg. Uh, the rest of it is converted to another compound, 3-phosphoglycerate, and the enzyme used is phosphoglycerate kinase. So you might be wondering that this is a 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, and there is now 3-phosphoglycerate, uh, right? So uh, if we're removing a phosphate group, why is the enzyme kinase? The reason for that is that sometimes the enzymes that, um, you know, that catalyze uh, reactions in both the directions. The same is the case in uh, case over here, right? It is a reversible reaction. And in another process termed as gluconeogenesis, which is uh, to a great extent reversal of the steps of glycolysis, uh, this enzyme makes sense because 3 phosphoglycerate is then converted to 1,3 BPG and we're adding the phosphate, so phosphoglycerate kinase in gluconeogenesis, not in glycolysis. And thankfully, we're producing ATP. Now, this is the first step in which ATP is being produced. We first use ATP, so these were the energy investment phases of glycolysis. Now, remember that uh, this was glucose as a 6 carbon compound, fructose is also a 6 carbon compound. Fructose divided into 3, into three carbon compounds, right? We used two ATP molecules. One uh, fructose uh, was converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Uh, a 3 carbon compound, the other one did DHAP, DHAP later on converted back to this. So, uh, what, so like, there were two ATP molecules produced, one by glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate itself, the other taking the route by DHAP, then here. So, two ATP molecules. Now we returned all the uh, cash back that we got, you know, we, we were equal, we even, right? So, we got all the cash back. <clears throat> Okay, so 3-phosphoglycerate, now we're going to convert that to 2-phosphoglycerate because 3-phosphoglycerate isn't that important to us, we're going to convert it. And like I said, for that we have the enzyme mutase because we're changing the position of the phosphate group. So we have phosphoglycerate mutase, right? This phosphoglycerate mutase uh, converts it to 2-phosphoglycerate and this 2-phosphoglycerate is converted to phosphoenol pyruvate with the enzyme enolase, right? Uh, then this phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to pyruvate, which is the last and final step of glycolysis. We are done, and this uh, ADP is generated, another ADP molecule is generated, rather, rather two, because uh, one by the uh, G3 phosphate and then the other by DHAP, so a surplus, net surplus of two ADP molecules. We got 100% profit. Yay! All right, so this is uh, uh, this is this uh, reaction is carried by um, pyruvate py kinase, right? All right. So this sums up glycolysis, and uh, another very important thing is that this occurs in aerobic conditions. Aerobic conditions where you have a great supply, an adequate supply of oxygen. Under anaerobic conditions, however, this pyruvate is converted to lactate lactate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase right and why do we do that because this body here NAD positive is in hemolytic amount right if we're converting it continuously to NADH eventually the step right here would stop right glycolysis wouldn't continue and we wouldn't have ATP left for us we, we wouldn't be able to um, you know provide our cells with ATP and they would die, obviously. So, uh, to combat that, we convert this pyruvate to lactate so that, you know, uh, this NDH uh, that is formed is reoxidized back to NAD positive and pyruvate is reduced to lactate and lactate uh, 
build-up actually causes pain and fatigue in the muscles which triggers us to stop our exercise, right? And lactate is later on, um, you know, oxidized in the liver to provide energy, well, as we later on discover. Okay, so uh, I forgot mentioning one point. This hexokinase, it has four isoforms. Uh, the first three are very important uh, and are found in all the cells. However, the fourth isoform, which is also called glucokinase, is exclusive for liver cells and pancreatic beta cells. So, uh, I've drawn here uh, a liver, and this is the hepatic portal vein, which is carrying all the nutritious blood from the uh, gut into the liver. And this here has a very high glucose concentration. Okay, so the difference in the activity of glucokinase from the other three isoforms, hexokinases, is that glucokinase has a very low affinity for glucose. And why is that important? Because, you know, if, uh, if it had a high affinity, it would continuously, uh, you know, um, act on uh, glucose, which is something we don't want. Why? Because it causes uh, the entrapment of glucose within the liver cells, right? And uh, also, uh, it is a trigger, for, it, it, it also acts as a marker for when the uh, glucose levels in the blood rise, right, in hyperglycemia. And uh, it acts as a threshold for insulin release. So what happens is that uh, glucokinase, when glucose is in a higher amount, so what happens is that glucokinase then detects it, because it, it, ha it has a lower affinity, so if, if the con concentration is normal, it wouldn't affect, uh, you know, it wouldn't be affected. But if the concentration exceeds beyond a limit, which is the normal limit for glucose, this glucokinase body is stimulated. And what it does is that it has a very high Vmax. Vmax means that it has a maximal velocity greater than the other hydrokinase isoforms, which means that it is going to, you know, uh, make the glucose uh, utilize, uh, be utilized faster in the cells. In the liver, uh, uh, it is converted to glycogen, which is a storage form of glucose, and it uh, also causes cells throughout the body to um, you know, increase the uptake of glucose so that the blood glucose norm, uh, level is normalized it is reduced at the normal level alright, so here we end our video for glycolysis I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you understood the topic in detail um, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you know, comment down your questions if you have any uh, in another video I am going to discuss some clinicals related to glycolysis so take care and Allah Hafiz